which seems unusual. Oh, Councillor Gordo. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, my first question, Mayor, is did we consult with the community about this long-term financial plan at all? For example, using our OurSave platform, which we already have? No. If not, why not? We, we didn't because uh, we, we do that through the budget process. As, as um, Councillor Grace's question sort of alluded to, a lot of the projects of interest for the community are around what's going in our capital uh, works budget and also what the rate rise is going to be every year. Um, the long-term financial plan is a much higher level document um, and frankly uh, I expect that when we put, um, uh, if we were to go out for consultation long-term financial plan I'm fairly confident we wouldn't get a huge amount of in input into it. What's more important is that we have a um, a robust consultation period for our budget which we'll do and have uh, open the well, longer than four weeks of consultation to make sure everyone gets a say in terms of what projects we're delivering and uh, how we're setting our rates. Do you envisage that there'll be an opportunity when this long-term financial plan is reviewed, if it is reviewed, uh, for community participation, feedback, buy-in, any kind of opportunity for the community to have their say setting the long-term priorities of our financial project here at Kingborough? Um, Look, I, it wouldn't be something that I would be pushing for Council Court over, um, only because I've, as I said, I, um, I'm aware that when we do, for example, our budget consultation, we typically get between 10 and 20 submissions, and um, the, the views that we see there, um, we're, we're all aware of, and I suppose it's good to refresh them every year. The long-term financial plan, I think, is um, much more higher level, and... Uh, Personally, I wouldn't think it was as important as the budget when it comes to doing the consultation. Thanks, ma'am. My next question is that in the section Kingborough Demographics, which is on page 19, the long-term financial plan acknowledges that Kingborough has an, a much higher overall level of population growth than the overall Tasmanian population. And we also know from our, our other work on council that we are seeing record month-on-month -month development applications and approvals in Kingborough. So we've got this enormous amount of growth. Does the long-term financial plan take a position on whether or not this growth is A, sustainable, and B, warranted, whether Mr. people want it? Uh, Mr Breen, I reckon you wanted the first part. Hey, you through you, Mayor. Look, essentially, yeah, as you say, the uh, long-term financial plan does take into account the substantial growth, and so I guess there's two factors to, to uh, substantial growth within the municipality. The first is... Uh, that will uh, certainly increase the amount of revenue that we're getting from rates, but that tends to be um, over a, a long period of time. Uh, what we do find is that uh, uh, growth, particularly when a new subdivision is put together, uh, we tend to get an upfront uh, cost hit uh, on the basis of uh, um, generally the assets get passed over to council once they've been completed, so we have to start maintaining those assets, we have to start depreciating those assets, so there is a, a, certainly a timing difference between the expense and the revenue, um, and then you tend to pick that up over time. So I, I think the difficulty for us is just getting that balance right. Um, and look, I, I think um, you know, there's certainly um, you know, th there's a move uh, for people to get out of the, the major cities and get into sort of uh, more regional type areas. So I, I, my perspective, I, I think I can continue to see the growth uh, going on for a, a, a reasonable period of time all over this sort of land being opened up ready for development. Thank you for that answer. Um, my next question, Mayor, is uh, about the rate revenue and our, the various levers that we have to, um, to pull in order to improve Council's financial situations. Rate revenue, it says in the long-term financial plan, represents almost 70% of total income. Um, has the Council investigated mechanisms of having tiered rates such as Sorel which make it so that uh, commercial entities which can afford to pay more because they are larger net worth entities pay a different level of rates than the small mom and pop stores which have lower levels of capability to pay. General Manager or Mr Breen. Mr Breen. I hear through you Mayor. Uh, yeah, look essentially I think um, as you indicated Sorel is probably one of the only councils that has that very differential uh, rating system in place. Um, it's, it's using information from the value of a general uh, and one of the things we know is the value of general do not vouch for that information as being accurate so uh, they're certainly taking a risk in using that to differentiate their rates uh, across various sections. We do differentiate here between residential and commercial rates, they, they don't pay the same uh, rate in the dollar uh, and uh, you know, I, I think um, 
you know, there's probably some one exercise we could do in the future it would be to do a bit more benchmarking around the state to see whether uh, our commercial ratepayers are, are paying uh, a, uh, more or less than they would in other municipalities. But uh, certainly at this stage, um, there's no direct plans to make any changes. Thank you. My final question, Mayor. Um, developer contributions. This is under the opportunities section on page 16. It says, Council believes developers should be contributing more to public infrastructure in Tasmania as they do in other states. Value capture, as it is often referred to, sees developers of large subdivisions providing cash contributions for public infrastructure requirements which stem from their project. That's the only real detail in the long-term financial plan about value capture and further development contributions. Are you able to unpack that and give any inference as to what that means, what that might look like, and how come there isn't more detail in the financial plan about it? Um, the, so the reason but the GM uh, might want to add, if, if I miss it, um, is there's a notice of motion on the books, I think it was from Councillor Westwood, um, about this issue and the, the, no, the notice of motion asked for a report into value capture options and I know um, when Ms Stevenson came on board from LGAT um, that LGAT's been doing some work in this area as well so I think it's generally pretty broad because Council hasn't yet adopted an exact position and nor has the sector. Um, but we have, through that motion, in principle said we'd like to investigate ways to get um, value capture and that's why it's listed as an opportunity. Thanks, Mayor. I think it could be a huge opportunity. So my next question is, because it might fundamentally shift the um, revenue that we can get really quite significantly, potentially, um, why then are we looking at the long-term financial plan now? Why didn't we postpone the long-term financial plan until after we had this brand new lever of being able to charge large subdivisions more? I think you said it best when you said um, our rate revenue is 70 per cent of our of of our total revenue and so even even if um, we were to secure changes to develop contributions I mean it's still going to be a small amount of revenue and let's face it things are going to change from between now and even our next budget the long-term financial plan even though it's a 10-year plan it's going to be it's going to change it'll need to be reviewed um, well before 10 years so um, my my personal view um, about us doing this review at this time is that it's good to do a regular review of the long-term financial plan. It has been, I think it's been longer than two years since it was updated. Um, and for that reason, given the fact we've had a global pandemic, we've actually deviated from our long-term financial plan, our budget last year by providing the remission. Uh, for all those reasons, it was important that we updated ourselves in terms of our long-term trajectory to get back to an underlying surplus. So that's why I think it was important to bring it back. Thanks, Mayor. That's great. I've got a few amendments that I'd like to try and um, test. Um, do you, well, how do you, do you yeah. want me to wait for a bit well, to hear some contributions? Well, yeah, well, well, it's up to you because there's no other lights on. Um, but if Councillor Cordova is going to move amendments, does anyone want to make a substantive contribution now? Or would... Councillor Cordova. Thanks, Mayor. The first amendment that I'd like is to add a clause that we will review the long-term financial plan every two years. So I'm hoping... Um, because it's not controversial yep. to ask the mover and seconder if we could add a communications consultation and review section I, um, looking at the table of contents that's probably the best place to add it is just a whole new section that simply yep. says council will review the LTFP every two years and council will provide as a second clause council will provide opportunities for community feedback and suggestions during this review process and I've emailed that to Amanda and you. Have you got it, Ms. Morton? Uh, oh. <laughs> I can just read it out loud. Ms. Uh, Ms. Morton's problem is, yeah. You, um, okay. Uh, so we wanted the amendment just to say, so what about um, in the motion it says budget deliberations um, and then with amendments, colon, Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, after the word deliberations, though, could we put with amendments? And then a colon, and then we sort of list what they are. Um, the, so the first one would be inserting a two-year review clause. Um, do you just want to put the whole amendment up together? Yeah, I, I'll just walk over there and show it to Amanda. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Let me read it to you. Council will review the LTFP every two years. And then a second sentence. 
that Council will provide opportunities for community feedback and suggestions during this review process. And I'm happy to take them one at a time if... Um, I think you just put them all up together and, yeah. and then we'll see how we go. Okay. Just keep reading them out. I'll anyway. keep I think some yeah, more of them. We've, yep. got a, we've got an audience. So Great. Okay. So the next um, one is under the opportunity section on page 16, I'd like to add a heading called Solar on KSP and Community Halls. And that heading would read, Council sees opportunities for energy cost savings from installing solar PV systems on buildings in the Kingborough Sports Precinct and, where appropriate, community halls throughout the municipality. So that's underneath opportunities and that's about solar. The next clause... Okay. Okay, you, whatever you think. Yep, sounds good. All right. And so that's just under the opportunity section. So it's not yep. a commitment. It's just um, alongside charitable rates, developer contributions, waste management. It's just another one that would be solar. It's an opportunity. Right. So why don't you talk to your amendment, and then by the time you finish um, your contribution, hopefully Ms Morton will have um, updated and we'll have it on the screen, and we can kind of go to debate on that. But do we have a... Um, or have you said your whole amendments so far? No, not, not all of them. I going. think that there's a non -con the non-controversial uh, amendment. Just before you yeah, debate it, we just need a second of that's all. So. Yeah, of course, yeah. So do you want to finish saying what your amendment is? and then? Do you want all of them? I'm confused. Do you want all of them? Yep. Okay. We're going to need to deal with them separately. Some are more controversial than others. So the one about time review, okay. the, the review, is it should just be the mover and second to just say, yeah, we want to look at it again um, in two so years. So all I want to do is get it through that, um, is deal with it as quickly and efficiently as possible. Yep. Does anyone have, have had a contrary view that um, we should deal with it in individually? Uh, Councillor Fox, the most oh. experienced councillor here. Individually? We yep. should deal with them individually. Okay. Uh, definitely. And yep. okay, we nice. all show... Mm, yeah. All right. With that, in that case, let's... Um, so the first amendment is we'll review it every two years. Um, Seconded by Councillor Midgley. Um, do you want any, any contribution to that? I don't think you get it much. No. Um, okay. So the amendment. Well, well, I could just say, I mean, clearly I'd like to also ask the Chief Financial Officer to comment, but I'm very happy to separate those two things, uh, meaning that if we are comfortable just for Council to review it every two years, fine. But also I wanted to throw into the mix that I think the community would probably like some buy-in. The, the problem is that you know, I've just taken your amendment, the first one, and then had it seconded, so now we're debating just whether Council will review the long-term financial plan every two years. Um, did you want to ask uh, Mr Breen for a comment on that? Yes, Mr please. Breen. Uh, yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, essentially, I guess our plan is to do the long-term financial plan every year. Um, the reason we didn't do it last financial year was because of the, the uh, pandemic impacts and it took us a while to really get a feel for that. So our, our intention is always to do it annually as part of the budget process. Can I suggest that? Because it's not explicitly in the policy, so that's why Councillor Cordova didn't pick it up. Um, perhaps if someone could suggest to the mover and seconder that we council will review the long to every year instead of two years, and then... I thought that was our policy. Yeah, it's not explicit in the document, that's all. Okay, but so we've, it could we've be, though, always I done it every, as long as we've had a long-term financial plan, uh, except for last year, uh, I think. We all haven't always had a long term plan. <laughs> if it's explicit, we definitely will. So, yeah. um, does someone want to suggest, perhaps Councillor Westwood, you, should, you could suggest to the mover and seconder that they amend the amendment to um, every year instead of every two years? I could suggest that. Oh. Um, but I'm not sure oh, if it's gosh. appropriate for me to pipe in at this juncture. Well, um, as the mover of the motion, I'm not. I know you would on the amendment, though. So. Uh, so the amendment is just asking the first, just amendment one, which is council will review the long-term financial plan every two years. Okay. Uh, someone be helpful. I will. Thanks, Councillor Bastone. Uh, can we change amendment one to the council will review the long-term financial every year, long-term financial would plan the every year? Would be happy yes, with thanks. that? Yes, That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Fox. Uh, sorry, and Councillor Mitchley Wood as well. Thanks for thank you, Councillor Bastone. <laughs> okay, 
uh, so we want to, any more conversation on that or do we want to vote on that amendment? Happy. So the amendment is the council review the long-term financial plan every year. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those against? Aye. We have a division. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Grace, Street, Bastone, Reed, Westwood, Fox, Cordover, Midgley and Winter. And those against Councillor Wass, the uh, amendment is carried. Councillor Cordover on his second amendment, which is council will provide opportunities for community feedback and suggestions during this process. Uh, Linda Seconder, please. Councillor Midgley, would you like to speak to a Councillor Cordover? Only to say that people do get a chance to speak to the budget, to feed into the budget process, and this long-term financial plan sets the priorities for that budgeting. So I think they, the community will want a say in that as well, and that's why I put this up. Any further speakers to the amendment? Councillor Westwood. Um, I guess in principle I support going out for community feedback and suggestion every time we do the long-term financial plan, but I'm uncomfortable about having to make these calls right here and now, and I don't, I don't want to sit here and have to make decisions on the hop for every single amendment you've got. I don't know how many you've got. Um, I don't know if this is standard practice. I have not encountered this before, but I don't want to review a document without input from staff on 10 different amendments. Four and amendments. How many? Four. Four different amendments um, and be asked to make a decision. So in regards to the community feedback, I support it in principle, but given resource constraints, given <laughs> competing priorities, I'm not sure that I want to actually have something that dictates we have to do it because we do we have improved our budget consultative process quite substantially and it is um, an opportunity for the community to provide their views happy to be persuaded otherwise